Hello, and welcome to our 35th conversation to connect. Let's get real talk powered by Exceptional Connections. I'm Chuck Oxford, Exceptional Connections business consultant and member of the leadership team. At Exceptional Connections, we offer intentional and innovative solutions to boost your business. We nominate different members of our Exceptional Connections community to have meaningful conversations about topics that benefit our community. So be sure to make yourself comfortable with a beverage of your choice, take notes, add comments and questions in the chat box to engage us during our conversation. Around the 45 to 50 minute mark, the lines will be unmuted and we'll invite our listeners to ask questions, share their ahas, epiphanies, and enter into our thought-provoking conversation. The inspiration for our conversations to connect, let's get real talks, is to create purposeful conversations. We desire to be relevant during these challenging and uncertain times and support our community to make an impact in the world and stay connected. So as we get started, I invite you to set aside distractions, invest your intention into the conversation that is about to unfold. Look for one idea you can take away that you can put into action so you don't cheat yourself out of the time you invest here. Our conversation to connect today is with Dave Blanchard, founder of Cognesis Marketing and Sydney O'Neill Deity Relationship Marketing Strategist, Exceptional Connections founder and chief connector. So we'll be discussing how to boost your revenues with effective follow-up. So before I bring uh, Dave and Cindy on with us, it's my pleasure to introduce them. So Dave Blanchard, owner and founder of Cognesis Marketing, has helped well over 300 small business owners get better results from their marketing activities as a KEEP certified partner. He also serves as a fractional chief marketing officer for larger businesses. He is an innovative, customer-focused, and results-driven marketing leader with expertise in startups, automation, and growth. He lives with his wife and son in Battleground, Washington. Cindy O'Neill Dady has over 15 years' experience as a business relationship marketing strategist. She founded Exceptional Connections Networking uh, in August of 2009 out of a burning desire to fulfill her I Am statement. I am an exceptional connector. This has led her to be a exceptional, chief exceptional connector and teach hundreds of business owners to do the same. At the core of her inqu inquisitive style is the art of cultivating and cherishing genuine business connections. Exceptional Connections provides a nurturing relationship-based environment where business professionals turn contacts into powerful advocates and raving fans while increasing their revenue. Cindy is fiercely committed to guiding business professionals to achieve lifelong business success. She is also a contributing author in an audio compilation on women of influence. So I welcome Dave and Cindy. Do you have any comments to make before we jump into our conversation this afternoon? Cindy. Hello, everybody. And thank you, Chuck, for that wonderful introduction. Really appreciate you being at the helm today. Um, kind of a, a change in, um, in, <laughs> in how we normally do things, but um, really appreciate you. And I've been looking forward to this conversation. So the art of follow-up is very relevant right now during this season. And really important as we're finishing 2021 strong and also using it as a runway to propel ourselves into 2022. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, so I'm also excited to be here as we begin to gear up for 2022. And uh, I'm excited to share some of the things that I've learned in working with uh, my small business clients and um, looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, well, it's gonna be great. So to set the stage for this conversation, how to boost your revenue with effective follow-up, let's start by exploring the importance of customer relationships and customer retention and business growth. So Cindy, can you kick us off with our conversation today? Yes, I'm glad to. Um, before we do that though, it just occurred to me that some of you may that are listening, whether it's live today, then you'll have an opportunity for Q&A afterwards or those who are listening to the replay, 
um, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, right? And so that's the, the wonderful thing about education is we learn things. Sometimes we've heard them before. Sometimes we're hearing them for the first time. So I just want to let you know that what we're going to be sharing today, these are important um, concepts, but they're in many cases, they might be a reminder to you. They might be something, you know, that you've heard and you think, oh yeah, I need to implement that. They could be reinforcers, things you're already doing and you want to have that just, you know, kind of little extra spur to, to keep you going and doing that. Or they're revelators. It's like, ah, you know, I've never heard that before. This is wonderful. I'm so excited and this is changing my life. So I want you to keep the things that we're talking about today in that context. So again, there may not be, you know, nothing new that you hear, but it may be one little thing that you can take and implement. And that's, you know, hopefully will be the reason for being on this call and devoting the time to the, uh, the conversation. So to jump us in, um, we can all agree, just as a foundation, that every business needs new customers, right? Yes, I want to see everybody head jack shaking, right? So, however, the real success of businesses is keeping customers and turning them into powerful advocates and raving fans for our businesses, right? So many businesses tend to focus on bringing customers in the front door. And I love this visual, if you can kind of stay there with me, you know, they're bringing them in the front door, but unfortunately they don't put enough value in retaining them or keeping them from going out the back door. So that's the context for our conversation today. So as a result, customers are walking away from doing business. And the tragedy is that business owners sometimes don't even know the attrition is happening, right? That's the sad news. So according to Harvard Business Review, selling to a new client costs five to 25 times more than an existing client. That's crazy. When, when I heard that, I thought, okay, that is such a great um, statistic. And, you know, so my passionate reminder to entrepreneurs is that they shouldn't forget that there's huge potential for revenue in their existing list of clients. Yeah. So just to underscore what you're saying, I, I have seen time and time again that, that small businesses overlook turning their existing customers into advocates and raising raving fans. Because as you said, the, the, the natural tendency of all of us is to get a new customer in the front door. We're looking for that new business. We're looking for that new business. Um, but when you think about it, it's much easier to get business from someone who already knows you, already likes you, already has experienced the service or product you have to offer and has gotten some value out of it, asking them to come back and buy more or asking them to refer others is a, is a much more effective way than going out and starting all you know fresh, brand new, finding someone who's never heard of you, gaining their trust, letting them, letting them know what, what it is you do and, 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 you know, kind of converting them to a customer. In fact, you know, 83% of customer consumers say word of mouth influences their purchases, 83%. So that means they've heard from someone else. And, and, and in this world today, social media plays a big role in that as well. So, you know, people, you know, they'll, they'll endorse something, they'll tell their friends about it. Um, it could be just over a conversation over coffee, but that word of mouth is, especially for smaller businesses, you know, the solopreneur, the business with two to five people, um, that word of mouth is really critical. Um, but the question is, how do we, how do we get more word of mouth? Um, and there's some, you know, simple things that we, you can do, and we'll talk about those later, but just as an example, I once helped a green drink company generate $50,000 in new business simply by asking their existing customers to refer, refer a friend and then rewarding both the friend and the customer when they did so. It was, a, you know, didn't cost them any money and it was a very effective way to bring in new business. So kind of thinking about, so, so what's the challenges we face when we, when we, when we think about this as a, as, a, as a business? It's really difficult to make every customer feel valued, especially when you're busy serving, you know, your current customers and, you know, delivering good service, being focused on that. Um, 
making them feel valued, making them feel appreciated is a challenge. Um, on top of getting new customers and hiring staff and all the millions of things that you've got to do. Um, and then the other thing is just that, that businesses find challenging is making it convenient for customers to engage with them, to give them referrals, to buy more products. You know, ironically, the, the top three challenges that business face with customer retention that you just mentioned, <laughs> they are so similar to the top three reasons, get this guys, that customers stop doing business with a cus with their you know a business and they move their business to someone else. So those three reasons, and I believe the statistic was like, you know, like you said, sixty percent. You know, 70 percent is what I've heard. Yeah. Is number one is they don't feel that their business is being valued. Number two, they don't feel appreciated. And number three is perceived indifference. So they don't feel like, you know, you care about them. And the ironic thing is those three things can be done very inexpensively, right? I mean, it doesn't just, you're, you're acknowledging, appreciating and celebrating them. And that's what we're all about here. So I think it's interesting that the, the top three challenges business space and then the top three reasons the customers leave business and do business with somebody else is really very similar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we see with these, they have really big effects on, on businesses, but often they're below the surface. They're almost invisible because they, they take a back seat to the day-to-day -day tyranny of businesses and the activities they have to do. So, Cindy, how does a business owner wrap their mind around effective follow-up and business growth? Well, I'm, th I'm glad you asked. So Dave and I have identified five simple steps to effective follow-up after a sale. And the perspective that we're coming from is number one, you know, the importance of delivering on your promises. So we'll go into each of these points in depth, but I'm just going to give an overview here. So deliver on your promises, be your word, operate it with integrity. Number two, it's important to show gratitude to our customers to delight them, make them feel special. Number three, ask for feedback, fix anything that's going wrong, and of course, offer exceptional customer service. Number four, ask for referrals and testimonials. So remember the period after the sale, we'll be talking about this later, is considered the honeymoon period. So you have that timetable. And Fifth, and lastly, thank them for the business that they send your way. Okay, so with that in mind, so often what, what happens is that businesses don't actually do a good job or adequate job of following up and customer retention. So Dave, where does a business owner start? As you know, taking the first step is often daunting and people kind of get paralysis around the first step. So how would a business owner start? Well, so the foundation of all of this is delivering on your promises. Whenever we make a sale, whenever we get a customer, we're making certain promises that we're going to deliver some value in exchange for, for, for money. And the fundamental to any of what we're going to talk about later is delivering the, on those promises and, and meeting and or, and or exceeding those, uh, those expectations. Now, most of us, the good news is most of us do a really good job of that. That's what we, fo we focus a lot of our time and effort on. So this is not something that's necessarily hard to do, but I just want, it's important to recognize that none of the rest of this works if you try to build it on a foundation where, you're, where, you're, where, where the customer's not getting what they came for. So we wanna make sure that, that every promise that you make in the sales process uh, you follow up on and deliver in a in an effective way and in a way that the, that that, it, that exceeds and delights the customer. So how can we do a, a deeper dive on this promises? Because everybody believes that they're doing this, uh, but there's still issues with business. So uh, Cindy, what would a business owner do next? Well, that leads really naturally into the second point of just showing gratitude to your customers. And as I mentioned earlier, it's all about delighting them and making them feel special. 
So when you, you know, what I found is when we feel, when we make customers feel valued, they tend to stay loyal to our business, right? They tend to give referrals. Um, so as a business owner, we want customers to be left with the positive, you know, memorable experience after dealing, doing business with us. And, you know, again, loyal customers can be amazing valued advocates to help us get new customers. They're sharing their experience. They're giving that testimonial firsthand. Um, it could be as, sim as simple as just giving a gift to somebody and having an opportunity for the word of mouth opportunity from that. Um, so it's really important for our customers to feel valued and special and have a sense that you're going above and beyond the call of duty. Um, you know, we've all talked about this. Being remarkable cannot be underestimated, overstated, or overlooked. We really have to be remarkable to stand out in, in our market. And so Dave, yeah. you had an example that you shared with me earlier that I think would be great to share with our yeah, the, the real key here is is creating delight. That's how you go above and beyond experience. That little surprise, that thoughtful something, that that isn't that's unexpected. And um, an example of that is a, a gym owner that I was working with uh, made it a practice of sending a book unannounced to all her members after they were a member for a certain period of time. And so, and she got an email back from one of her members that just said, thank you for the book. I came home. I was kind of having a bad day at work. I came home. I, I, this, this package arrived ex unexpectedly on my, you know, in, in the mail on my porch. Um, so it was a little bit like Christmas. I opened it up and there's this really great motivational book. I showed it to my husband and he said, oh, well, my gym doesn't do that for me. So the notice how that current, that, that moment of delight was what got shared. She didn't tell her husband, you know, I got a great workout at the gym today. That's like, you know, table stakes. That's just what's expected. What got shared was that, that little extra bit of delight. And, and that, and, and it's natural to share. It's like somebody delighted me. You want to tell your friends, you tell them about the book, but you also tell them about the gym. And, and in this case brought up the opportunity for him to think about, well, maybe I'm at the wrong gym. So, so that's how that's an example of how this creating those delightful, memorable experiences can can stimulate word of mouth. Yeah, so that 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 makes a really good point uh, that people and customers like to be seen, heard, and witnessed. Mm. It's really important. They feel valued, then they feel special. So, Cindy, how might uh, a business owner make a customer feel valued and special? You know, this is perfect timing for that question because I want to acknowledge actually um, somebody that's on the call with us right now today. And I thanked her for that. So I was in at my mailbox yesterday and I got a little package and I got this adorable little calendar and it's 2022 gardens, um, just beautiful little gardens, you know, pictures for the year and then a little post-it note and um, I'm just going to read it if it's okay. I, I saw this and thought of you. Here's a here's to a, a great year of gardening in 2022. It's from Kim Pelham. So Kim is a great example of going above and beyond. She you know she's pays attention to what people like. Um, she takes action, and she as a result you know it, it did make me feel special. And, you know, not everybody is interested in gardening. So I know she didn't send this out to everybody. Um, it wasn't like a pre-printed message. It was, you know, so those little things really do make a difference. And I just was grateful to have that as an example, because it's a beautiful example of how just keeping people top of mind and then acting on it, how that makes such a big difference. So I've, I'm already a big fan of, of Kim's but I just so respect that she walks her talk. And that's what we all need to do. We all need to be walking our talk and taking action. And just kind of to put a bow around that, you know, there's a lot of times we think about things. We think, oh, I need to send a card and thank them or birthday or whatever, but they don't know unless you actually do it, <laughs> right? You don't get any brownie points for just thinking it. Um, so, 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 being so being intentional and being proactive is important. Yes, 
Yes, exactly. And so, you know, above I talked about the reasons to be grateful um, and now some more practical applications. Um, so how to make a client feel valued. Again, the example I just gave you was a beautiful and perfect one, but being thankful, thank your customers, take the time to personalize your communication like Kim did, make it about them, not about you. Um, like you mentioned, Chuck being consistent, offering ongoing support and continuing to maintain connections, of course, being proactive, um, continue to offer improvements. And uh, as Dave mentioned earlier, the appeal to make things convenient and good customer service, um, ask for feedback, and of course, being intentional. Be intentional about creating a positive customer experience. So, you know, for exceptional connections, you know, bringing people together, it's important to create a community that shows appreciation and um, let's let people know that you care about them and you don't take their business for granted, which again, you know, speaks to the point of why people leave a place of business and go do business with somebody else. They don't feel appreciated. So I've got an example of that. I was going to say, so do you have an example of that? I do. <laughs> so those, for those of you who were taking part in our Finnish uh, Strong Challenge, which we're going to be telling you later, I created this card and it says just popping by to say hello. And it has a little graphic here, kind of movie night. And then I just said, I hope this card finds you in the best of health and spirits. I've recently found myself thinking about you and wondering how you are. Are you open to scheduling a call or Zoom meeting to reconnect? Until then, I hope you will enjoy your popcorn treat. So it's popcorn with the same branding as on the card. Um, your popcorn treat and kicking back with a good movie. Give me a call and tech or text me so I can know your popcorn arrives safely and so we can schedule a catch up call. And then contact information is on the back of the card. So this is an example of you know being memorable, um, being able to send something to somebody that's like maybe a little corny right <laughs> Pop corny um, yeah a little corny, corny but yeah. but it, it it's like it has that sticky factor right that has people remember you and think you know that's really nice and it's something that is duplicable you can send this to a lot of people at the same time um you know what kim does is a one-off thing and you do it when you can and when you know, when the right gift comes up in the right timing, but this is something that you can do if so, you, you know, make a list of people that you haven't connected with in a long time, and this will get people calling you and, you know, schedule Zoom calls on the, on the calendar. Yeah, so I, I can see how receiving a gift like the popcorn in the card would be valuable and memorable and create that sticky factor. How does this actually deepen the relationship? So, Dave, do you want to do you want to take oh. that? I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, I, I I I think it's just by making things memorable, as you spoke, uh, as you mentioned. Um, it's it's you know people like to uh, you know it, what does it feel like when someone thinks of you. And you and and they they say, hey, I was just thinking of you, like in that card. It makes you feel good, makes you feel positive, makes you feel known, makes you makes you feel appreciated. So that's how, um, you know, it, it creates that bond, and that's how it it deepens the relationship. Well, you had some examples that we were talking about um, with dog collars and tootsie rolls, and um... oh yeah, so um, the. Um, I, I have a client who is a, they're a franchise. They do bo dog boarding and daycare. And one of the things we're doing is after somebody be becomes a new client, we're going, we're mailing them a little uh, dog collar tag with the dog's name on it and, and their, their logo on the back. So it's a real special gift. It's something that's memorable. They're going to put it on their dog. Every time they see their dog, they're going to think of canine resorts. Um, uh, another example, you know, that I experienced was when I, um, I bought a headset headset a few years ago and the box came from headsets.com and I, the box came, I opened it up and they'd packed along with my headset were four little mini Tootsie rolls. 
It's like, well, that's cool. I, you know, I like Tootsie Rolls. It was a little surprise. Um, and now I've told everybody about, about headsets.com, not because of the headsets, but because of the Tootsie Rolls. Um, and then one of the things I do for my new clients is I send them brownies and they love them. They're really good brownies. And they, I, I always get a comment. They're like, oh, thank you for the brownies. So they really, it really, uh, it adds a layer. It, it adds a dimension, I would say, to the relationship. It's not just all business. It's personal. Um, and, and it kind of adds that level of, of, of delight and fun. Yeah, yeah. And setting you apart. Yeah, I think that's great. That's really great. Uh, so what, uh, so now that we've got the relationship going with the client uh, or the potential client, what does a business owner do next, Dave? Yeah, so I think the next thing that's important is to, uh, is to find out how satisfied they are with the product or service that you've provided them. Now, most of the time, people are going to be satisfied. Things are going to go well. Sometimes, hopefully the minority of times, something might go wrong. I was uh, talking with a, a, or working with a client who uh, ships vanilla extract from Hawaii. And a lot of times the bottle will be broken when, it, when it's uh, received. So nothing to do with them. It's all in the handling. And, and, but it, the customer wasn't satisfied. So they would never know about that unless they proactively followed up and say, how'd everything go? And the customer says, oh, you know, I, I was really excited to get your product, but it arrived broken. Oh, no problem. We'll send you another one. That's, you know, fixing anything that does go wrong is really important. In fact, they've, they've shown that customers end up more satisfied if something goes wrong and you fix it than if nothing goes wrong at all. So, but, but how do you know if something's gone wrong unless you ask? So, so you know, doing some sort of customer satisfaction survey, it can be simple. It could be satisfied, neutral, dissatisfied, or it could be, how did I, how did it go? You know, reply to this email. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, and then the, the, the next step is we're going to be asking people for referrals, but we don't want to ask for a referral from someone who's not satisfied. That's, or a testimonial or a review. That's, that's going to be counterproductive. So that, that step of finding out the, how satisfied or how well things went is absolutely critical before moving on to the next step. Yeah, so, okay, so now we've covered the three steps. We, we delivered on our promises. We've made them feel good. We've asked for the feedback. So what, what does a business owner do next? I mean, what's the next best strategy their step in the strategies a or Cindy whoever would like to reply did you want to take that one asking for referrals well sure I'm here's what I want to back up a little bit and just one thing I found it's really important to for it to be about them not you that was we mentioned earlier and so one of the most basic ways is just when you're connecting with somebody to find out like what is the best way to communicate with you because there's a lot of different portals these days, right? Um, so in the old days, we would pick up the phone and call people. And now I've found that people like want an appointment before you call them. <laughs> it's a very weird phenomena. Somehow I missed the memo that you actually need to do that. But people are like, I don't have time to talk. You know, let's schedule a time to talk. And that's fine. Um, so, you know, would you like to be called? Would you like me to email you? Do you like me to, would you prefer that I text you? Um, there's Facebook Messenger. I mean, there's LinkedIn. There's like so many portals. <laughs> um, so, you know, I have my preferences and I tell people, if they ask me, I go, hey, I check my email multiple times a day. Facebook Messenger, not so much. Um, you're welcome to call me. So asking people, you know, permission to communicate with them and or finding out how you would best con connect with them, I think is really, really important. Um, and, you know, there's no right way. It's just what's important to them. And then being able to make notes of that and, and connect with them in, in a way that engages them right off the bat, you know, and we're not playing you know, you know, Cindy, that's such an important point. I feel like, and today there's, we're bombarded with messages from everywhere that, oh, you need to be on social media. Oh, you need to be doing email marketing. Oh, you need to be doing sending cards. Oh, you need to be, 
And, and like each one of those is a magic bullet that nobody's ever thought of before, and that's going to get your message through. Well, the, the reality is, as you said, as you point out, different people have prefer different things. So you want to try different things and see what works, see what works in general, see what works for specific people. There's no magic bullet. It's not like, you know, oh, now it's Instagram. Now it's TikTok. Now it's you know, whatever. Um, it, you really need to be sensitive to what, how your market wants you to communicate with them and how individuals want to be communicated with. Right. And the bottom line is you just have to ask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ask and write it down <laughs> or pay attention, right? Um, so it's, it's really important that we communicate and continue the communication. So uh, Cindy, so I guess what's really important here is to keep the lines of communication open and begin asking your, your, your customers for feedback and asking them for referrals. Yes. Right? Yes. And it, it's really important to be able to do that timely. Um, I, you know, they, they call it the period after the sale is considered the honeymoon period. And so you know, assuming everything went well with your transaction, your business, the product and service that you offered, um, you know, that's the time I found that window to ask somebody for, you know, a referral or a testimonial, um, you know, just being able to give them the opportunity to be raving fans and powerful advocates for you. And um, as we mentioned earlier, happy customers will refer to other customers. They want to do that. Sometimes you just have to remind them. And one other thing I've found is you want to make it easy for them. So some people even like, like, you know, these are the things that would be helpful if you, if, if, if this was, you know, if you found value in working with me to mention. Um, some people even say, would you kind of give me some ideas or notes on what to say. And so not that you have to do that up front, but if many times people just want an idea of what you want to focus on. And so don't be shy of just, you know, telling people, hey, if you'd like, I'll, I'll you know, give you some notes or send some bullet points, that's helpful. Um, or give them the link, tell them where you want to put that referral. Like if you want it on LinkedIn or you want it on, you know, in your uh, Facebook page or what have you, or just email it to me. So being clear about what you want them to say, give them an idea or give them some support with that and where to post it, I think is really important. Um, yeah, just if I could add to that a little bit. So I think so one of the real powerful things to do is, is to actually offer something to their friend through them. So it might be, you know, I'll sit down with anybody and do, uh, you know, evaluation of their uh, you know, of their finances. Uh, I'll, I'll take a look at their insurance. You know, so if you're, if you're an insurance person and you're looking for a referral, you, you say, you know, if you've run into somebody who has a need, tell them that I'll do a, a, a free review of their insurance portfolio. So that's, that's something that's, again, memorable. It's something to offer. It's not just have them call me. It's uh, it, 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 giving that offer makes it much easier to, 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 for people to refer to you. Yes. So, you know, realizing that people want to help, realizing that there's a window, a vulnerable time um, where it's really important to take action, um, I think is, is part of this, you know, the success of a referral program. If you ask somebody three years later, they're not as passionate. They don't remember all the TLC that you provided for them. And so to do that timely is, is really important. Yeah. So, so it's really important to, to have a timely ask for referrals and testimonials. However, not everyone's going to follow through. It's equally important to thank them when they do, which is coincidentally the, next, the fifth step in your effective follow-up. So what insights do you have about recognizing your clients for their referrals? So Cindy, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so, you know, for in this instance, we're talking about, you know, this is somebody that they've given a referral. They referred you to somebody else. And, you know, they deserve to be acknowledged, appreciated, thanked um, for that act um, that of generosity, of sharing with others what you do and um, being your advocate. So, of course, like we talked about, sending a thank you note or a gift to let them know you appreciate them. Um, having that gift be personal to something they like 
you know, as we talked about with the calendar is something that sets you apart. Um, you know, letting them know that, that you are, you know, appreciative of the referral and adding words, you know, of uh, thank you for trusting me with your, you know, um, your friends and your family. Um, and then, you know, of course, I've got an example and this will be, this is included in the challenge as well that we're doing. And so I crafted this card, which I think turned out really nice. It makes me hungry. I'm gonna have to make some brownies. Um, so it says, thank you for your awesome referral. And then I put up here, you've earned brownie points. And then I have a message. Um, thank you so very much for your kind referral of, and then the person's name. You can be assured that anyone you refer to me will be treated with the utmost care and professionalism. As a small token of my appreciation, please enjoy your decadent brownies. You are amazing and your friendship is a treasure. It has been a joy to know you. Thank you again for your referral, warm regards. And then P.S. Call me when you receive your care package so I know you've received your well-deserved brownies. And then on the back, there's a kind of a little brownies a la mode, how you can um, warm your brownies in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds. Don't forget to add a scoop of ice cream. Feel free to share your second brownie or freeze it to enjoy later. So it's what's included is two brownies that says, say you've earned brownie points. And then it says, especially baked for you in that person's name. So again, this is something that can be done in these um, cards that I, the two examples that I showed you, the popping in and this one are included in our finished strong challenge. But those are examples of ways you can be, have fun, be different and let that person that's given you a referral know that you really appreciated them taking the time to do that. Yeah, so I think this is, these are really great examples that you and Dave have given us today on ways to follow up and be memorable and create a great experience for your customer base and potential clients. So why do you think that business owners rarely adequately follow up when it appears that this is where the gold mine is and where the success is? You know, that's a really great question. And I've been to a lot of real estate meetings where they had the Bob Berg or, you know, the uh, different types of programs that are out there. And I, I'm always intrigued when I'm in a room with a lot of people when you talk about follow-up because there's a lot of heads doing this. Yes, I know I need to follow up. Yeah. Yes, it's important. But I found the reason that people don't is they don't have systems and structures that are set up to adequately follow up, allow them to follow up in the best of times or in the worst of times. So if it's, if it's easy and it's done, I mean, I, I tell people it's to done. <laughs> it's to done. You don't have to put it on a to-do list because it's to done. And so you want, you want that to be, um, you know, kind of the, where you come from, it, the, you know, that your, your focus of getting new sales is the tyranny of the urgent. You're always running after the new sales, right? Um, there's maybe a sense of overwhelm, too many things to take care of. Um, you know, it's important, but not urgent. Um, there's no strategy or intention. There's no systems and structures. So all of those things kind of are, you're setting yourself for success or failure, basically. Yeah, so it looks like to me, what uh, we're getting to here is it looks like uh, when, you, when you include things, systems and structures that you're building in consistency. So it seems like consistency is gonna be a key element here. Right. And, you know, I just want to be vulnerable here and say that, you know, I've been in the follow-up business for years and I have lots of tools, but if I don't use those tools or set them up for success, then I drop the ball also. And so it's something that we all deal with. And it's not about making people wrong or bad. It's just about the reality that we know we need to follow up but most of the time people don't follow up because they don't have the structures and systems that make it easy to do so. Yeah, I was just talking to a, a, a business, actually a district manager recently, and he was, we were talking about this and how he, about putting systems in place for him. And he was so excited about the prospect 
because he, he, he would go to a, a community event, come home with 200 leads, and then he has to call through them all. Some of them leave voicemail, some of them aren't there, and then he's got to remember who to call back. And then, you know, something happens in the business. You know, he's, he's uh, I mentioned the, the dog care business. You know, a dog gets injured, he's got to take it to the vet, he's got to call the customer. All that 150 people, 250 people that he, call, that he needed to call that day, that gets put off. And then it gets put off another day for something else. And then it never, you know, it's then it gets to be too late to, to do that follow up. So he was really excited about the idea of getting some systems in place to help him with that. Right. And, and so we could be have fun with it too. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Dave, uh, with this, with your comments, I appreciate them very much. Good insight. Uh, can you share then what a consistent, adequate follow-up looks like for business owners? So uh, you can kind of set the stage for what they should be thinking. Yeah. So it's really what we, what kind of the principles that we talked about, but putting them, putting systems in place to, to actually make them live. So, you know, after a sale, there needs to be a follow-up to say, thank you. Even backing up before that, when you meet someone, there needs to be a follow-up with them to, to get to know them and, and get them to know you. Um, if, they're, if, they have, if they need what you have to offer, invite them to be a customer. Once they become a customer, then systematically and consistently and every time saying thank you. And then systematically and consistently and every time saying how did things, you know, how did things go? And then systematically and, and if consistently and every time saying uh, you know, it would really help me to, to, if you would refer a friend, here's a convenient, easy way to do that. So um, it's, it's, uh, you, I, you kind of pick up on the fact that I'm, that I'm emphasizing systematically, consistently, and every time. And that's where we fall down. You know, we get it, it happens sometimes, it doesn't happen other times. And if we can put some of these systems in place to do these things, then it, it makes a big difference. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh... Thanks for the uh, for the input there. Uh, so, so now we're sending cards. We're checking in with our clients and our customers. So, how do we build rapport and keep the lines of communication open? You know, what what is key to setting the stage for future sales? Dave, can you add to that? Well, yeah, I think I mean there's also the personal touch too. We've talked about systems, but really, I found the secret sauce is combining the live personal touch with the systematic thing. So after you send a card, if you don't, I mean, that really is a conversation starter for a phone call later. Did you get the car? Did you get the, did you get the brownies? Oh yeah, I did get the brownies. I love the brownies. Oh, great. Well, what else is going on in your business or your life? So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, an easy conversation starter. So I think the other, another thing you want to do is put that personal touch in um, of that phone call. And again, this kind of goes back to different methods of communication, using them all. Use the, the, the brownies to get their attention, use the phone call to follow up. Um, that's just one example. Yeah, okay. So then the, you, you feel the key is really combining uh, human touch with uh, technology. Yep, exactly. None, none of us wants to do business with robots. So, yeah, you know, you can send all the emails you want, you know, automatically, but that doesn't necessarily, it, it, it's part of a, part of a complete breakfast is what I like to say. So, but you want to be able to use all these things at the right time, a good mix of things you want to lever, you want to do things that are efficient. Those tend to be automated, um, but then also the personal touch. Yeah. So I'm picking up here that really the technology is building in the consistency. That's, That's right. That's right. And you can automate yourself. One of the things I love to do is, is create tasks to call people. Um, you know, the gym owner that I was talking about earlier had a, an amazing follow-up system where she had, she was able to have her admin staff like clockwork. If somebody came in for a free tour, they would get a call. And if they didn't get a hold of them, then they get another call the next day. They get another call the next day um, until they got a hold of them and they, you know, uh, moved them on to the next, uh, the next phase. Um, so uh, that is a really good way of combining the technology to sort of the automation with the personal touch to automatically put, set yourself a reminder to do some, do that, to make that personal touch. 
Okay, great. So, uh, so Cindy, how do we determine when our follow-up strategies are actually being successful? How do we, how do we know? How does a business owner know? Well, there's, you know, there's basically, you know, this is going to be impacted on your business, you're going to feel it, um, you know, really by the results of, you know, are your sales, you know, it, the opportunity to boost your sales and happy customers are more likely to come back and buy more, right? So you want to be top of mind. It's about the quality of the customer experience. Uh, it's about increasing customer retention. And, you know, again, as we talked about, satisfied customers are more loyal. Um, it's about, generating customer testimonials and referrals and realizing that future clients will be more willing to trust you if you show them, you know, that you care. And if you give them, you know, a good customer service, um, improving your performance, um, you know, surveys, customer feedback, um, innovative ways to be able to meet the needs of your customers, um, innovation, you know, listening to your customers' needs and problems, um, you know, getting in, that invaluable information and feedback from them to create new products and new services. Um, and I think it's important not to, as a business owner, take things personally and feel like it's a personal aff affront, like I'm doing something wrong, but just being open to what others have to say and, you know, really putting a bow on this to differentiate ourselves. Because a lot of people, we know that we need to follow up, but we don't. And the people that do follow up, they stand out in the crowd and they're doing something business. They're doing something different that other people aren't bothering to do. And as a result, it sets them apart and differentiates them. Mm -hmm. so, it, so it appears to me then that retaining clients and making them long-term advocates for your business actually leads to better profitability because you're not chasing new customers all the time. So oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And just again, you know, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we all know that every business needs new clients, new customers, but the focus of our conversation today, you know, and I, I just have enjoyed it so much and thank you guys for just this uh, opportunity to chat with you guys is the value of retaining customers and keeping them in the funnel and um, having, you know, allowing them not only to, to take advantage of the business that they're offering you, but also the referrals and the, um, you know, word of mouth uh, opportunities that can grow your business as well. Yeah, so, so it's clear to me, uh, based on what you guys have said today, that the systems and structures give your business an edge a competitive advantage over others because people are business are rarely doing this adequately. So you're creating an edge for yourself in, in a very noisy market. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So let, let's, let's take all these great steps that we've done, these uh, different processes and takeaways and introduce the real life systems and structures that you have baked into your let's finish strong challenge that's coming up. So um, we yeah, so I, I'm really excited to help people actually put these these ideas in action. So we've just talked about how you know follow up is essential to growing your business, and we've talked about why we don't do it. We don't have the right tools and systems. Um, and so what Cindy and I have done is we've put together a finish strong challenge, and in that we're going to give all the training, all the tools, all the systems necessary to do great follow-up. And we have, we'll, you'll put them in action. That's part of the challenge. Um, and if you do, we know you'll be amazed with how quickly you'll be able to experience um, measurable results. So, um, you know, this isn't just another theory. This isn't just another training. There's a lot of trainings available in the, uh, you know, it's, it's to small business owners today. It's not just another good, good idea. If if you accept the challenge and you do your part, um, you, you'll produce new business and become a master of follow-up. So we'll provide you, as I said, with all the strategies, tools, a step-by-step -step roadmap of exactly what to do and the support and encouragement 
that you need to get into action. And it's that action that produces results. Results like getting new business from past customers, getting referrals to new business and finding new sales opportunities. So we'll teach you the proven systems that will help you master follow-up and grow your business, retain customers, improve your pro profits, create raving fans, and, um, and you know, discover the secret sauce to, to doing that. So you're going to learn the follow-up principles. You'll learn, we're going to cover who should you connect with. We're going to cover what you should say when you connect with them. The three conversations, which will tell you exactly how to say what you need to say. And then we'll, we'll set you up with, with a toolkit and then a set of how to's so that you can get put your action plan into, into action. Um, we've got four seats left still available. Um, if you have any friends or networking colleagues you think might be interested in participating, um, feel free to forward the link to them. We're gonna put a link in the chat. Um, the Finish Strong Challenge is gonna be, it's gonna start Monday, October 25th. It goes through Friday, October 29th. It'll be from noon to one each day. And then that will be followed by a week of action days where you're actually going to put what you learn and the tools into practice. That's October 30, 30th through November 7th. Um, you can take the weekends off if you want. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then on November 8th, we're going to have a celebration where we're going to celebrate all the, the results that people achieve. The cost is $20, but it's completely refundable. We only do, we're not doing the $20 to make money. We're only doing the $20. So people show up because people, again, we all have the best of intentions, but uh, so if you, if you show up and participate, we'll give you that $20 back at the end. Skin in the game, baby. Skin in the game. That's right. <laughs> sure. um, but we are, we are absolutely committed to getting your results. And in order for that to happen, you need to, you need to bring your A game. So that's what the $20 is for. Um, is there anything you want to add on the challenge, Cindy, that I didn't? Uh... Well, we, we, so Mailbox Power is the system that you're going to be using. That's one of the sponsors of this challenge. And then that I'm kind of bringing to the, the party here. And then Dave is bringing Keep, the Keep system, which is formerly Infusionsoft. Um, and so the other cost we want to be, you know, transparent about is the cards and gifts that you send. Those will be charges that will be from your account. And we think so, that'll be about 70, $50, $75. Yeah, we figured depending, depending on how, how, many, many cards you send. how many cards you send. Yeah. Yeah. And what type of package you already have that's already accommodating that could be less. But um, yeah, so we're essentially offering you, if you don't have a mailbox account, 14 day free trial. And then the Keep account, we have a similar kind of a program where you'll have access to the Keep account service um, at no charge. Um, and I think the last piece, so I'll put in the chat box, the, everybody on the call right now is already registered, but anybody listening to the recording, um, we'll put the link for being able to um, register. You're going to want to register by Friday. So that would be this Friday, the, um, let's see, today is the 20th, so it'll be 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, register by the 22nd so that you get your digital workbook. Um, so that's all I have. I just um, really looking forward to it and the opportunity to dial in, you know, just some systems and structures to support all of us in being our best selves and being able to really truly let our, our customers know that, that we care. Yeah, so I, I think that it's always important that as business owners, we all, we all remember that to invest in our businesses and invest in our skill sets. And if you uh, take the challenge, you're going to learn about proven systems that will help you and assist you grow your business, retain your customers, and improve your profits. I think business structures and processes always lead to better profits. So uh, I, what I like about the challenge is that it's action-oriented. You need to be engaged, and you improve your skill set because it will have direct impact on your business, positive impact. And you should see sales and profitability go up. So any last parting words, Cindy or Dave, before we open up the line? No, let's find, let's see if uh, anyone has any questions we can help with. Yeah, let's open it up for Q&A. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions or insights, ahas, epiphanies, this is the time. So everybody unmute. And and raise ah. your hand. <laughs> huh? So any ahas, any comments, 
Any questions? Karen, I see you unmuted yourself. Oh, I was just following directions. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, no I'm worries. I'm a rule follower. <laughs> okay, no worries. Well, I know a couple people have to, to jump from the call. We just wanted to make ourselves available to answer any questions you had before we end this recording. Cindy, I have a comment. Sure. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. I can, you can. Okay, well, I'm really excited. You know, I love, um, I'm really powerful about my customers and my clients and customer service is one of my passions, but I need a, I need a accountability and I need a system. So this is awesome. I'm just really excited to do this. Right. Yeah. It, and you know, one thing I'm going to just mention, um, just because of the gals that are on this, you know, the people that are on this call today that are, uh, thank you for joining us and those who are going to be uh, listening via the recording afterwards is it, it, it accountability is an important piece to this. So the structures and the systems, and I'm looking forward to getting ideas from you guys so we can collaborate and mastermind through this, give each other some ideas um, that we can implement into our follow-up system, because that's where, that's where it really takes off when it, it's something that you feel like it's going to make a difference. Then we we're always more um, willing to dedicate our time and resources to it versus something that we feel like is like throwing spaghetti at the wall. Um, so that was a really good point, Heidi. And we're looking forward to all of us being able to benefit from this challenge and uh, just have fun with it. Well, and that's that's really why we, we baked in accountability by creating a group, because when you're part of a group that's all going through the same thing at the same time, it just creates a natural accountability. It's not like someone's, you know, waving their finger at you, but you, you, it's just the way it works. And so, uh, and then you also have Cindy and I, we're, we're the coaches, we're, we're here to, you know, if you ever run into a challenge or problem or lack of motivation or whatever, we're here to, you know, get you past that. Or even using the tools that you have at hand, because there've been a lot of changes, especially to mailbox in, in the last couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, we don't know, we're not, we're not, what do I want to say? We're not, um, we're on this journey with you. We're committed to upping our game in terms of follow-up and um, it, it's an ongoing process. And so um, we wanna give you the benefit of the experience that we have of what we learned over the years and then also be able to support you and being able to fine tune it to your industry and your needs as well. Um, so thank you for everyone for joining us. I'll let. Chuck, I'll let you close. Yeah, so I wanna encourage everybody to accept the challenge here because I think it will help you build a stronger finish in 2021. And the resulting benefit will be a running start to 2022 so that you don't have a letdown during the holidays and have to re restart and regenerate your uh, follow through in January. So this will take on, as we said, we're gonna incorporate partly technology, which will keep the consistency in, and you won't have a letdown during the holidays. And you have a running start there, a jump start on your competitors in January. So- And a plan. <laughs> and a plan, that's right. <laughs> and he works. Right. So uh, if anybody has any last questions or Dave or Cindy, any last comments, then we'll, Colin. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. I, I yeah. just wanted to say too that um, I'm really looking forward to the system components of this because I, you know, I do really great in spurts where I follow up and I and I I do things well and I get good feedback and uh, but then there's other times when I fall off and I think, oh my gosh, I haven't thought of them for a while or I haven't, you know, gee, I wonder if their address is still current and you know all of those kinds of things. So. I'm looking forward to the system piece of it to help me, again, be accountable and consistent because I think that's one of my areas of uh, growth need. <laughs> yes, that's, well, that's we, perfect, perfect. We all do that, but um, I think you made a really good point because we need to be able to differentiate what needs to be automated so we don't have to put our, you know, we don't have to tap all the time. We know we have that peace of mind to know it's taken care of, and then we can dial in the things that need to be fine-tuned because of changes in the economy and 
you know, your business and, and all of that. So being sensitive to that is super important. So thank you for that. We want to make sure we, we address that during the challenge. Yeah. Okay. Any, anything else? Then? If not, then we can uh, finish up here. And I want to thank Cindy and Dave for all their insights and input into this great topic that will, could be a game changer for people. So, and their businesses. So with that said, thank everybody for showing up, for staying with us and absorbing all the great information. And uh, we'll see everybody at the challenge. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys. Wow. Take Have care. See you next week.